right, we have the next match, uh, Nikki Ryan and Santeria Lilius. And um, this should be a good one. I have not seen this one, but uh, I don't know. I think there's one more match after this. So far, uh, it's been pretty much a draw between the two teams. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's see what happens here. Um, and if you haven't clicked the link on the description, check it out. Uh, you can get access to all the strength and conditioning programs for the sweet sides of fighting underground. And you can also submit your own footage. So let's, uh, let's start it here. Okay. So I've, I've seen a lot of Nikki Ryan matches and I have, uh, seen a couple of, uh, uh, Lilis's, uh, matches. So I'm curious to see how this goes down. All right. So basic tie up here. Hand fighting. Some collar ties, hands gaining, gauging distance. Doing some fakes, see, see if we can get a reaction. Hand fighting. It's all pretty standard stuff. <clears throat> We'll see how long this goes on. He's got a two on one, do a little judo sweep. Two up, oh, good. Went for a double, got a single. That was good. All right, so we're fighting the hands here. Looking for an arm drag position. Looking for a wizard there for a second. That was nice. So uh, Nicky Ryan does something really good. I've, I've seen him do several times. That was basically uh, kind of going to a um, type of arm drag to a foot sweep on the far leg. Uh, this creates a bit of a trip or a stumble to where you can get, typically gain access to the back uh, and get a body lock uh, position. Okay. Looking for some snap downs here. Shaking the head, shaky, shaky. So a lot of this is hand fighting. It's very important. You know, I always say the hardest part, man, about this um, this fusion of wrestling and judo and jujitsu that's happening. A lot of the hard uh, the hard part is just the entry. Uh, at this level, everybody's so good at just you know gauging distance, monitoring inside position, not allowing you know two on ones. Um, it's just very hard to get an entry. But once you get an entry, even when once you get an entry, it can be uh, very difficult to actually finish. Uh, you can just you just saw that just now with uh, Nikki Ryan actually. Shot for a double, got the single, tried to do a trip, didn't get it, the guy the guy got out. So, um, so yeah, this is going to be, this is why we spend so much time here of hand fighting. A little foot sweep there. So, a little duck under, shot for the double, looks pretty good. So, he got the double, and uh, Centuri decided just to pull guard instead of trying to wrestle it stand up. So, right off the bat, got <clears throat> control of the outside leg. Uh, control on the uh, uh, or uh, position of with the left hand on the knee here on the bottom knee, so you can kind of uh, start to steer the position. Um, again, I'll always say the top arm for the guard player and the top leg are generally going to be the issue. This is, this is how you pummel back to the inside position. This is how you reset the guard over and over and over. One of the ways, at least. Good frames. Now we're entering into a reverse De La Hiva position here. He's got a good frame up top. Nicky Ryan did uh, something interesting there. He was he was up, and then he decided to drop down and try to get connection to the upper body here. Um, if you look, uh, the De La Hiva position has somewhat changed because uh, Nicky actually dropped his left knee down uh, at an angle to the ground. So this is actually very different rather than his knee being uh, posted up here where reverse De La Hiva really shines. If, uh, if, if Nicky Ryan's left knee was more like a knee ride position here and he was just kept driving forward, this would be uh, uh, a little more... Uh, control for the person on bottom, but since he decided to drop the knee at an angle right here, it also makes the grip very awkward for the person on bottom. So, and you can see how his knee is over sticking between the legs here. Uh, traditional knee ride, his leg would be up top here. Now here we're going to see a switch. This is what uh, I've been talking about recently. And, uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of this open half guard uh, play and we, you're going to see a lot of transitioning from this Troy Bar type of entries, the shoulder pinch, uh, and then going to the legs when the person retracts. So there's goes uh, Nicky Ryan went back to the knee ride position here. 
We may see some posting here, some uh, kickstands. I always call it the kickstand. Uh, if uh, Centuri actually put his left hand, his uh, left hand here, and posted it on his knee right here, he could do a kickstand with his elbow. But that way, he's not trying to, he's not getting uh, bearing the weight too much weight of uh, Nicky Ryan's uh, hips, trying to get that angle. It also prevents the angle for the knee slice. But he hasn't done that yet. He's just hand fighting right here. There's a lot of hand fighting in the open half now because uh, a lot of guys, besides the shoulder pinch and the uh, underhook on the legs to start to go for leg attacks, we're seeing a lot of arm drags on the forearm and Russian ties on the inside arm, um, and even arm drags on the inside arm to like back attacks and things like that. So this is, uh, and also sweeps. So he's a very complex guard. It's, it's complex, but it's, it's very active. This is good, very active. So see, once Nicky Ryan postured back, he, he was able to get, uh, Centario was actually able to get the underhook on Nicky's uh, uh, right knee here. And so now that the underhook's there, uh, he can actually potentially start to get into leg attacks, leg entanglements. And Nicky's doing a good job here of trying to keep that connection to the upper body with his right hand. Uh, of course, he's going to have to worry about the Troy bar here or the shoulder pinch. So now we see the leg going across. So now we're entering into a possible reaping position uh, with the left foot here. If uh, Centauri can actually get his body facing this direction over here, um, he would be in a more of a reaping position. This is a better, uh, slightly better position for him to be in for leg attacks. Um, no issue here. Nikki Ryan's very comfortable in this position. Can use it to take uh, to try to take the back or do counter attacks. So we'll see how this goes. So first things first is uh, Nikki Ryan stands up and he gets uh, heavy on this leg. This is a classic uh, defense. Uh, it's actually one of the main defenses I've seen. Uh, one of the ones I use the most is just putting, getting a heavy leg when somebody's attacking with a single leg X or Ashigami position, or even a double outside Ashi position. Um, I teach guys just to get on the, to, to stand up on this, on this leg. I'll generally get to, when I teach this, I'd say, get you know, put, lean this direction to where you're trying to maybe even putting your hands on the mat here. Not that you want to put your hands on the mat, but just to show you what angle you want to have. And stay kind of loose here. You may guys keep a heavy leg, but stay, keep your upper body loose so that you can't be moved as, uh, as well. Remember, if you stiffen up, whenever you stiffen up, your whole body connects together. And so any movement that I make from, from the person on bottom's perspective, I'm going to be able to move your whole body. But if you loosen up, um, I'll only move portions of your body. This is very different. This is universal uh, uh, throughout jiu-jitsu. It's the wet blanket type of technique. So you see he popped, uh, Nikki popped his leg from the uh, right side to the, to the left, to, I'm sorry, to the right, to his right side, to the left side. And now he's going to the other side. Now what he's looking to here to do here is um, potentially is to uh, control the feet here, pin, start to push them down to pin the ground to start to free the knee line, start doing a little bit of a back step here, potentially get into a back attack or side control. There's the back attack that, that immediately he didn't even wait to even get a full back step. He's, trying to get that pinch on this leg right here. He's going to try to throw him this way and attack his back. There's the back attack. And wow, that was, that was beautiful. That's where I think that's actually worth watching again. Um, I, I, I suspected that's where that was kind of going. Let's watch it in live time here. So we got the reap. I think he puts his leg to the other side, does the back step. There's the pinch rolls through, takes the back. Ah, uh, man. I mean, at, at, at this, uh, you know, at this speed and at this level, that was, uh, that was very impressive. Very, very good. Um, and, uh, pretty classic, uh, entry actually for the, for, for, uh, for back attacks, uh, with the legs, the general rule now I always tell guys is that, um, especially when I'm teaching leg locks or in our leg lock class, uh, when we start to do positional sparring, I say, you can attack the legs and you can attack the back. That's it. And the reason why is because, um, Generally, when you're going for someone's legs, there's a lot, there's a lot of potential back exposure. And if we just kind of ignore that and just start doing counterattacks or just looking to defend the whole time, um, we miss opportunities to actually attack the back. So just understand that when you start attacking the legs, you are, you can potentially with somebody who's skilled that's on top, um, you potentially are exposing your back. So this is actually what happened right here. So we climbed the top. He does have one hook in. He has... Uh, seat belt position, one arm over, under one arm over. He switched to the, his choking arm. He switched his seat belt to the other direction. It looks like he has his other side hook in now. So now he has both hooks, seat belt position. Uh, but they actually, you know, technically the bottom leg is out here. 
it's only his top leg that is over a uh, thread over top, which is not terrible. Uh, it's a good position. I mean, I would think optimally he would want this bottom leg here, um, you know, hooked in, you know, uh, with his foot facing the ceiling, the bottom of his foot facing the ceiling, much like this for like a body triangle type position. But this is good. This is not not bad. So because the bottom leg was uh, not the dominant leg that was actually controlling uh, the back, um, it was the top leg, he, he can actually get to the, uh, flat to the mat here and actually start to uh, escape the back. Um, that was that was almost all of that was just due because of the leg position. The unfortunately the top leg was over top and not the bottom leg, uh, not was not uh, up and hooking the back. Um, not at the backs of the mat. Obviously climbing to the mount would be the next step, and he just went to the guard. Uh, Centuri actually recovered his guard, which is very good. So you notice here, what else I was talking about earlier, see the two on one here. A lot of times in this open half position now, guys are playing this two on one and you can really destabilize your, your opponent here. And, you know, by pulling and again, going into arm drags and Russian ties, you can start to produce sweeps. If you start to make hooks with your, with the, uh, with your, um, with your guard, like this outside leg here becomes a hook. You can start to really produce something here and see, you can almost, uh, even technically start to wrestle up. You're seeing a lot of guys here. If somebody retracts, you can actually technically wrestle up. There's another general rule I always tell people, and, you, and I said this on some of the other matches in this uh, quintet here, especially with uh, Nicky Rod. You watch Nicky Rod, he just kind of sits to guard. You know he's going to, you know, if you don't come forward, like really trying to pass, he's going to go forward and he's going he's gonna to do a single or a double uh, double on you. Um, so that's kind of the general rule now. The general rule is if the person is just kind of like not really passing, they're just kind of staying kind of neutral, or maybe they're just not even engaging at all, the, general, the rule now is to actually just go forward wrestle up. And again, you don't have to be a great wrestler to do this. You already did the hard part, which is the entry and the connection. You should already have connection with the leg uh, and um, be able to produce something from that. So again, we're going into the reverse of Lahiva position. I think he does a good job here, always monitoring that top leg. He, his left hand is actually always controlling this, uh, the top leg, trying to monitor that, that position and uh, for the De La Hiva position. And, uh, you know, the guy, uh, you know, Centurion on bottom is actually doing a good job here. He's holding, you know, he's still staying in this reverse De La Hiva, um, and he's using this, we'll watch with his right arm, keeping a good frame. This right arm is always, the top arm is always the strong framing arm. And so we're seeing this uh, type of passing again, um, just so we can watch this one more time. This type of passing is becoming more and more popular. Not that it was ever anything like that nobody was doing, but controlling the feet, walking around with space. Watch this. So Nicky just kind of walks around, but controls the feet as he walks around and then drops his head in. And what he's trying to do is drop his head into the belly button region so that he can uh, essentially pin the hips down and the legs can no longer uh, thread over top. And then he can start to get chest to chest connection and gain, uh, get to north south position. Um, this has been used over and over and over again uh, at these uh, tournaments recently. So it's very effective. The problem is, is the person on bottom, uh, if they're a good guard and they keep their knees retracted, they keep their knees really retracted and they deny the head position to the inside, uh, then they can easily start to turn back around and start to recover guard. This is not the end of the, uh, end of the pass though, because as they're spinning back around, you can actually, the person on top can start to go to the opposite direction or start to produce another pass as we're seeing here. Now he's going to the other side, the opposite side, uh, passing and look, let's see, we can see here, right here. Look, you see how he's controlling the top two legs here. And he's kind of really far away and he's just kind of walking around here. What this is doing, this is a very critical point here. Uh, when you're playing guard, if you don't get, if you don't establish some form of connection. Okay. So it's very important to understand that um, when you're playing guard, it's, you have to get a, a establish a connection. What I mean by that is you have to establish some form, some kind of guard. Okay. Um, at, 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 the general rule, as you're always saying with it, when you're starting to learn guard is you want to have four points of contact. You want both your legs, both your hands doing something, connecting to the person, trying to destabilize them or, or uh, hold them in some sort of way. What this type of passing does is it, it's because you're so far away, it kind of denies you, the person on bottom, really getting connection with their legs. They really need connection with their legs. If you look at most guards, all of it is, you know, obviously with, uh, you know, like, K guards and Z guards and De La Hivas and reverse De La Hivas and shin on shin and butterfly and all these variations. Um, the legs obviously play a, a huge part of this. And so um, if you can deny the connection, like 
any kind of connection to really establish a guard for the person on bottom, there's really the person, it puts the bottom, per, the, the bottom player in a position to where they really just have to, you know, frame and, um, really try to manage their, their, their space. It makes them a little more frantic and trying to establish a connection. Um, so what this does is for the person on top, this makes it a little easier for them to technically pass if they can start to, if they can control the top leg here, uh, and the, uh, if they control the top leg and get connection with their hands. So top leg usually, and then of course on the knee here on the, on the other knee, Sometimes both both feet are con are controlled. Sometimes there's a there's a grip on trying to get the inside position here. But there's always this kind of like distant kind of game being played for the person on top, almost like a tripod position. Um, uh, so this is what's happening: uh, is that when Nicky Ryan is not allowing a connection for the person on bottom, he can actually start to circle around here. And yes, the person on bottom can follow, uh, but they don't. The person on bottom really doesn't has, doesn't have a connection. And so what they're kind of left playing with is just kind of managing, you know, managing distance and really trying to control inside position and trying to establish some form of uh, a connection. So uh, in, in this particular case, I, I would say that it is, it is an advantageous position for the person on top, uh, just as a general rule with this type of passing. You see that? This, this just makes it for the person on bottom has to be a lot, a lot more reactionary. You remember the guard is actually for, it's an attacking position. So he should be, be, he should be making Nicky Ryan defend a lot here, but there is not really making him defend because he can't really get a connection. So he can't produce any attacks. And then as soon as uh, Nicky, Nicky sees an entry, uh, you know, he can try to shoot in or, you know, try to get to that inside position. Always remember the inside position that is trying to be obtained is the space between the armpit and the hips. If you can get control of that position on your on your opponent as a general rule, then you have a very good chance of controlling that person, whether it be top or bottom. So the person on bottom, you notice, has to work out a lot harder to get some sort of guard going. And Nikki can, you know, the person on top or Nikki Ryan, they can choose where they enter the guard, right? So he can enter this. So now he chose to enter the gardens into this, into that, that particular moment, because he may have felt that it was a, you know, a strong position, maybe a, a camping or an, a camping position or an anchoring a position he can anchor into and really start to maybe produce a pressure pass. But Centauri's doing a really good job here. He's, he's going on the offense. As soon as Nicky Ryan drops into his guard, he immediately goes on the offense. And you can see right now, two on one, Trying to get extension, you know, if he can get uh, Nikki a, a little overextended, this is where things can start to go wrong. So right there, you can see there was a fraction of a second to where there's maybe some overextension there, but there was not enough control uh, over Nikki. He just pulls back. Again, right off the bat, look at the hands being posted on the feet here. Nikki drops into this knee ride. Getting control of the head. You always want upper body co uh, connection if you can get it when you're passing. Notice he has the underhook here. He has an underhook. Uh, Nikki has an underhook on uh, Centauri here, but Centauri has a really good frame right here. His top arm is framing really well. Knees are facing kind of down, creating this kind of wedge between, you know, him and Nikki. But a lot of work for the person on bottom. That was a cool little sweep. That was nice. Or a sweep attempt. And if you just look at, really observe what Centauri is doing here, it's very effective. It's amazing what a good understanding of frames, uh, framing with your top arm and your top leg can really produce. A lot of this movement, uh, Centauri is actually stopping the pass with this, with his top arm. So if Nikki goes in this direction, he uses his top arm, his left arm as the frame to prevent the pass. And Nikki goes this direction, he'll use his right hand just as a frame to stop the pass or just to impede the pass long enough for him to get his legs and everything, and everything else involved. And don't get me wrong, Nikki's having to work really hard here. He's, I haven't seen him stop moving here. He's, he just keeps consistently moving. And this is a good strategy as well. You know, if you can do this, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very taxing on, for the person on bottom. And I would just like to say also that there is a way to do this without actually you know, people look at this sometimes and they're like, man, I don't have the cardio for that. This is crazy. 
but what there's a there's a big difference in in how you how we energy is being used you may not be able to see it here but if you ever roll with these these guys or guys at this high level uh you'll you'll feel something a little different they don't stop moving but it's not like they're moving is very like um they're not using a ton of energy to try to just grind through right like the whole time is not a hundred percent energy there are, there are, it's a kind of a lazy kind of movement to where they're just kind of flopping themselves around in certain, at certain points in time so that they can reserve that energy. So it's not the entire time you're just pressing a hundred percent. Um, it's not that there's a lot of this wet blanket kind of loose, uh, you know, dropping, uh, uh, flopping around kind of, kind of thing that's happening. Um, now it's not just flopping randomly around. It's actually done with technique and trying to, and using it to do for, for timing, but you can do this in a way that doesn't, you know, just deplete you completely. Um, this is a common misconception a lot of people have is they think they have to just keep moving, 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 and then they get tired. Well, no, that's not a great strategy for the for you on top because obviously if you get tired on top, you you the person who gets tired first typically has a has a rough time uh, and most likely loses. So just keep that in mind when you watch this, and you can see how loose. And kind of relaxed, Nikki is when he's on top. He's just real loose and and and, and seems a little more relaxed. There are times when he, he he explodes and goes forward, and that's that's correct. He should do that. So it doesn't mean you're just like loose and you know all the time. But when you're trying to create an angle, you are a little more loose and more wet blanky, making the person kind of carry your weight. And then when you see the opening and the timing's correct, then you use your energy and you use your explosive movement. All right, so they're gonna reset to the center. All right, uh, we're probably going to see a lot more of the same here. So again, to reverse the lahiva, switch to the leg attack. That was really good by Centurion on the bottom. He went to reverse the lahiva, and he got his leg a little too close, and he uh, grabbed the leg. And again, he, he looks like he's going into a reaping position here. He has to be careful with this leg because Nikki obviously knows the legs as well. Um, but you just need to be careful uh, with counter leg attacks, uh, especially uh, when you start to get this lace position. So we'll see if Nikki can start to try to take, attack the back here again. Uh, one strategy, that, another strategy you can use to counter a lot of leg attacks is by keeping your leg center uh, along the person's spine, right? So if you can keep that, your, your, the leg that's being attacked center and not letting it cross left or right with your big, with your toes pointing to the ceiling, uh, then you, you can, uh, you can counter a lot of, uh, you can give yourself time to actually start to free your knee line and start to maybe even do counter attacks. Obviously, if your toes are facing down, you're in a knee bar, so that's not advisable. So you can see, uh, as soon as it, Nikki put his leg center and he got a frame with his bottom leg here on the, on the butt. So he can actually create some pressure to, as he's scooting away, he's gaining, uh, uh, his knee line back, uh, because he's placed his foot here. And what now what he's doing is now he's in this ankle lock position, um, or the ankle lock grip, uh, position. So he, he could he could start to produce an ankle lock. He could start reaping over and go to the heel hooks. He can actually start to wrestle up here. Uh, I'm not sure what he's going to do, so let's see what happens. So it looks like he's going for an Aoki. A a a and because uh, you can tell here because I can see the toes here. If, if he was ankle lock, obviously I wouldn't be able to see the uh, – I'd, I'd see the toes, but uh, the big toe would not be facing me uh, like it is right here. He'd be facing the ceiling. And I can see the heel. I cannot see the heel, so – uh, obviously, the heel is getting more towards the chest on Nikki's chest, and this is going to create an aoki. An aoki is simply just a, a heel hook, basically. Um, it's a rotational uh, uh, lock. Uh, so uh, it's just that it's on the out, the legs on the outside of the body here instead of the inside, uh, but it very much mimics an inside heel hook. You need to be very careful because aokis are, man, they're super dangerous. Okay, now we see we got that butterfly hook here. So this is like a butterfly ashi position, but he's, he's opting for the aoki. So now it's going to be a little more difficult. In order for uh, Centauri to really get out of this, uh, he cannot turn to his left. That, that, I, that would not be advisable uh, because he would leave his big toe behind and he'd break his own leg. So what that means is he needs to get to his right or he needs to bounce over uh, Nikki's leg over here or get, or get to standing, one of the two. He can try to hand fight here, but again, with rotational... With rotational submissions, it can be very dangerous uh, trying to hand fight, especially when they already have the grip. Seems fairly comfortable, though. I don't know if he's looking at the time or looking at God or what. 
So he's doing some hand fighting. He's doing a good job here. He's keeping, uh, what Centurion's doing here is he's, he's staying, trying to stay tight. He's actually getting, getting his hands involved here, hand fighting, keeping Nikki close to him. If Nikki starts to actually get uh, extension away from him, this is going to be, this will be a tap. Because he's keeping him close, this may not uh, finish. But he's, it's pretty tight. And Nikki has his, uh, you know, this kind of genie grip here. It's going to be a little hard to break. There we go. Beautiful. So he got out of it. That, that was, uh, that's impressive. Um, you know, when, when I watch these guys, you know, it's, uh, I, in a, in a, in a training session, I would not encourage anyone to do that in a training session. <laughs> don't, don't, uh, hand fight like that. And with somebody on a full locked in, uh, Aoki with the butterfly hook. Uh, but you know, at this level, you know, certainly do it hand fight. And you know, he's young. Both these guys are pretty young, that flexible, I'm sure to a certain degree and knowledgeable. You know, I'm sure he knew he was fairly safe there, staying connected. Okay, so this will be interesting. This I haven't we haven't seen Nikki on his back yet. Possible false reap. Same kind of thing being played here. Nikki goes to the reverse de la Hiva. Looking for that possible false reap position, reaching it going over. But uh you, you know, notice in Santeri here, he's actually pushing that foot down to the ground here, pushing the knees, the, the foot down or the knee down. This is freeing his knee line. So he doesn't have to worry too much about that. I think he has a two on. So he's going to the underhook uh, reverse de la Hiva. This is when you, you lace the, your arm under the leg and then lock it in. This is actually a very good position. This is, uh, makes it much easier for you to invert technically. Um, not that it's hard to invert with a regular reverse de la Hiva, but with this grip on the reverse de la Hiva, this already orientates your shoulder here to get to the ground, and so you can actually start to invert. Uh, the problem is, is that uh, Centera is actually controlling the outside leg, which is actually going to make it very difficult uh, for uh, Nikki to, if he wanted to invert, to invert. But you can see Nikki's uh, other arm, his left arm here, he's kind of trying to grab the other leg here, which is, which is a good, good strategy. Centera is aware of that, so he just kind of drops that knee down. He's peeling that leg off. I think he's kind of staying there loose. There we go. Yep. I understand with that, with that kind of grip on reverse of Lahiva, you can't just pull your leg out. Like you're, you're stuck to the person. You can put pressure in, but you're not, you, you got to get that leg free. There we go. Now the leg's free. Yep. Going back to that grip. See the grip there? He went back to the grip, reverse de la Hiva, and the Centauri is actually pushing that down to the ground. Smart. Does a high step out, switches over to go to a knee ride. He's trying to get connection to the upper body, but he pushed that too fast, got a little overcommitted. But now, but he went, now they got overcommitted. As he came back, he grabbed the heel. Missed it. I think he's on top. So this just happened because he moved too fast. He tried to get go too quickly. Nikki overcommitted him a little bit when he tried to press press through, and then he was stuck trying to go for a leg lock at the last second. It didn't have really good uh, control of the position, and then lost the position. That's okay. I mean, it was worth going going taking the shot. So just some standard hand fighting here. A little bit of pressure passing. Nikki's actually lacing his left arm through the knee through the legs now. It's good. Now we have to fight the two on one. There's a two on one. That was a good sweep. That was a really good sweep by Centera on the bottom. Now they're back up. So let's get some wrestling going. They got about a minute and a half to go. Okay, so now they're gonna wrestle. And don't ever underestimate hanging on the guy's neck with these collar ties, just really constantly pulling their head down. Yeah, it's pretty exhausting. Underhook, that was beautiful. Centauri was did a really good job there, ducking a, his underhook under and trying to do a throw by. Nikki pulls guard. Trying to get that, that grip on the leg. Gable grip, trying to reap, take his leg to the other side. So now we're entering into a pin position. This is pretty good. You know, uh, Centauri has a good position here. He's got a pin on the, on Nikki Ryan's arm here, controlling the outside arm so it's not, can't frame. 
Um, but he still has to contend with this hook right here, with Nikki's hook. Can't pass with that, with that, with that hook here. Um, always remember, you know, the, the, the diamond concept and all these things that we've talked about forever, which is, you know, your knee should always be technically retracted in these type of positions. When this person is this far and this high, your knee should be retracted. Again, your inside position is from this, from this space to your armpit. If you can deny that space, you can do that very easily by retracting your knees. Okay. It's kind of a, Trying to throw the legs by there, going for the leg lock, just kind of threaten it, see if you can get a reaction. Oh, he's smacking the arm out of the way. That's that new, like, <laughs> punch the frame out of the way. Good. He's getting a little more, it's a little more faster pace because he's running out of time. So he's trying to, trying to produce something. So he's, he's, he's picking up the pace. He has a grip on that leg. You can't go anywhere without your leg. So he flops to the other side. If you notice when Nikki's recovering his guard, it's always that outside leg. That outside leg is always pummeling back to the inside. So as good of a job as Centuria is doing by cutting the angle and trying to get to the side, Nikki always takes that top leg and just pummels it back through. And then, of course, he always has the top frame here. Again, you see it again. You see the le top leg here pummel back in. The inside knee here is retracting. This is all guard retention stuff. And you can maybe see a little bit of a, a kickstand here on that arm with that arm. You see there? So there's a little bit of this kickstand stuff going on to frame with the leg here. And look at the leg pummeling back to the inside. Boom. As soon as the leg pummels back to the inside, you're reset back to the guard. And this is going to go to time. There's going to be no submission, uh, I don't think. Uh, I've only got a few seconds left. Right to full guard. Yeah, and now it's going to be time. So fast-paced, uh, much like the other matches. Uh, this is um, it's really interesting to watch. All right, so this is going to should be a draw. Uh, so this is really interesting. Uh, same again, same same game. I'm 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 watching here. Just good passing. You know this open half type position. You can produce a lot of attacks. Uh, but you know this, at this level, man, it's uh, you know just timing and you know timing, energy, and uh, you know who can uh, maybe trick the other person a little more, a little better. <laughs> Because uh, a lot of times you, these guys, they know, everybody kind of knows, you know, this stuff. Everybody kind of knows the same stuff, you know, unless you come with something brand new, you know, like uh, back in the day, like 50-50 and X-Guard and all this stuff, like nobody had never seen before. Lachlan, you know, I always bring up Lachlan recently with, uh, you know, his K-Guard stuff when he wrecked everybody with that. Uh, everybody kind of knows uh, everything. So uh, not everything, I should say that. I said people at this level know, you know, what you, what you can and cannot allow to happen. Um, so, uh, good match. Uh, I think there's one more. I think it's, uh, I think, I don't know if it's Craig Jones, but I think so. I think Craig Jones is the last one, but, uh, yeah, we'll go on to the next one. All right. Thanks.